Hi guys, it's Miss Josette and I am here with this week's Kids Club message and we are um, a week after Easter. We are talking about when Jesus, I'm so sorry, I forgot that I had, oh goodness gracious, I forgot that I had my sticky gum in my mouth when I started doing this message today. But what I want to be able to do is I want to be able to share with you about when Jesus appeared to his disciples after he had been resurrected, after they had gone, after they had gone to the tomb. So I'm in the book of John where Pastor Tim preached last Sunday, but I'm right after Jesus has appeared to Mary Magdalene after she went to the tomb. And this is when Jesus is going to be appearing to the disciples, where scripture tells us that he appeared to the disciples. But the disciples were upstairs in a room and they were afraid and they were hidden because they thought that they would get arrested. And because Jesus was killed, they were they were hiding because they had been his followers. Do you think the fact that they were hiding in that upstairs room stopped Jesus from being able to find them? No, he appeared to them. And there's a whole story about Thomas and Jesus. And Thomas wasn't there the first time. And he didn't believe that Jesus was there. And well, but that's not the part of the story that I want to focus on today. I, I got a little sidetracked because I get a little sidetracked when I think about Thomas. Because I think that a lot of us might have been just like Thomas. But I also think that a lot of us are also like the other disciples and they were hiding and they were fearful. And uh, can you forgive me for getting sidetracked? Can you forgive me for having my gum and wanting to and being distracted by my gum? Can you forgive me for that? You can? Oh, that's really good because that's exactly what I want to talk to you about in the scripture out of the book of John. You see, Jesus said something to the disciples when they were hiding in that room and he appeared to them. He said something to the disciples when he first came to them. It says on the evening of that day. So this is Easter Sunday on that evening, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were fearing were in fear of the Jews. Jesus came and stood among them and said, peace be with you. When he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw it. And Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the father has sent me, I am sending you. And when he said this, he breathed on them and he said, receive the Holy Spirit. And he said, if you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. But if you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. You see, Jesus explained that if we forgive others sins, then it's forgiven. But if we don't, then sin sticks around and it's sticky, just like this gum that is sticky. And if I would get it in my hair, it would be stuck there. If I would have it on the bottom of my shoe, it would be stuck there. It might even stick to a piece of paper if I put it there. Matter of fact, we know it would. But the thing about this gum is that it it isn't really my sin to have been distracted by my gum. And it isn't something that I don't want to forgive. But if I would put this gum in my hair and make it like the sin that someone else has that I don't want to forgive, this gum, because it's so stretchy and sticky, would really be stuck in my hair unless I did something drastic about it. It would really be stuck there. Like if I don't forgive someone else's sin, it's stuck with me. If someone has hurt me in some way and I don't forgive that, then that's stuck with me. When we don't forgive somebody when they have wronged us, that wrong sticks with us. Because you see, they move on and they they are able to move past what they've done. But if we can't forgive others the way that God forgave us, then that wrong sticks with us and kind of causes us issues. You know, I'm going to take this gum right now and I'm going to slide over here to the garbage can. I'm going to throw that gum away so that 
I make sure it doesn't get stuck on somebody's shoes or pants or even something that someone sets down on the desk tomorrow. I want to make sure that I'm able to get rid of it. See, part of that, what I was talking about before, part of forgiving someone is getting their sin or their wrong that they did to you out of, their, out of your life and out of the way. But if we let that sin stick around, it keeps getting in our way. When we can't forgive someone for something, it changes our attitude. It makes us think differently about them. It makes us treat them differently. It makes us have a different attitude, which then actually ends up causing us to be grumpy and sad and start doing sins of our own. When we hold grudges, we spend a lot of time and effort being mad at someone. But if we forgive and we let go of grudges and things that someone has done that when they've wronged us, even though it's hard, it actually can make us a happier and, and better person. We need to spend more time loving and caring for people and less time being grumpy, less time holding on to those things. Because you see, God could have held on to a lot of things that we've done. God could have held on to those things that all of the people have done from the days of the Old Testament through what's coming in the future. God could have held on to the, that and remain angry and upset at the people for not following what he said. But he didn't do that. God found a way to be able to forgive us and to be able to give us forgiveness and a way to be able to be happier with him by offering us the gift of salvation and the gift of forgiveness of our sins and wrongdoing through what his son did. And so what God asks of us is just as he has forgiven us, that we forgive those who have sinned against us. I mean, that's right even in the model prayer. Forgive us our debts as we forgive those who have debted against us. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who have trespassed against us. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who have sinned against us. No matter what translation or what version of the Lord's Prayer you say, God has instructed us to forgive others the way that he has forgiven us. And I know that that is really hard to do because you're, you're thinking, but God, you don't know what they've done. God, you don't know this thing that they've done to me, how they've hurt me, how they've wronged me. God, you don't know. But the thing is, is he does. And as he maybe has already forgiven that person, and as he has forgiven you, you need to forgive them for what they've done. It's not easy to forgive others. And it was not easy for Jesus to go to the cross and do what he did. It was not easy for God to decide to send his son for this sacrifice to forgive us of our sins so that we can be with him in eternity. So forgiving people isn't easy. And it doesn't mean that you just forget and let people walk all over you. But forgiving people is what God has instructed us to do. And it helps us to live a much happier life. And sometimes the way to do that is to ask God to help us have the strength to forgive. Because sometimes what someone has done is pretty bad. It's pretty harsh, pretty hard. There are a lot of unkind things that happen in the world that we need to forgive. And sometimes we have to ask God for that help. So let's pray together about being able to not have sin stick with us like gum on our shoes or in our hair, but to have sin be able to be something that we can throw away and get rid of and grudges be something that we can throw away and get rid of and not have it be stuck with us. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you so much for this chance to share. Father, I thank you for the illustration that we had with the gum that maybe that thought sticks with you the next time you're chewing a piece of gum or some sticky candy, Father, that that thought sticks with you of the stickiness that sin and grudges can be. But if we just forgive we can have that out of our life. We can have that stickiness go away and have that gone. Father, thank you so much for helping us be able to forgive people when they do things that hurt us. Father, thank you for sending your son to forgive us of those things that hurt you. Father, I praise you in the name of your wonderful son. Amen.
Thanks guys for letting me share with you. I hope you had a great Easter and we're in the end we're in the end of the Easter season and talking about the things that Jesus did afterwards before his final ascension into heaven, before that second coming. So much more in this book to talk about. So much more in our Christian faith to share with you all the time and I just get so excited to share these opportunities with you every week. Thanks. God bless. Bye.